Whack an Atheist. We're going to whack him gently in Christian love. Welcome to Whack an Atheist Wednesday at Dinosaur Adventure Land in Lenox, Alabama. Come in, come in. Uh, we believe the Bible is true. The Bible is the Word of God. Whack an Atheist is like the whack-a-mole game when they stick their head up, say something dumb, whack them back down. It's not As long as you keep your head down, no problem. The winner of today's Whack an Atheist prize is Suzanne Wackham <laughs> from Butt College. I'm sure it's Butte, but uh, <clears throat> from Butt College in Sacramento, Sac Tomatoes, California. Suzanne, congratulations. You wrote an article somebody sent to me. I'm going to blame Suzanne Wackham for writing this article. She said there is evidence for evolution. This is a biology class that she teaches at Butt University. She said, a horse is a horse, of course, of course. Really? The evolution of the horse. Hmm. This drawing was created in 1848, but it's likely you can recognize the animal it depicts as a horse. Let's see, yeah, you're 29? Yeah. Can you recognize that as a horse? Yeah, horse is a horse. He's a little slow, but okay. Uh, <laughs> although, although horses haven't changed that much since this drawing was made, they have a long evolutionary history during which they changed significantly. How do we know? The answer lies in the fossil record. Now, Miss Wackham, I'm uh, going to try to explain a couple things to you. There is no such thing as a fossil record. There isn't. A, there's a bunch of fossils. We got a lot of them here, but there's no record. How do they get by with teaching this stuff at Butt University in a taxpayer-funded school? Okay. The lineage that led to modern horses grew taller over time. You are making up a story, Miss Wackham. You don't know that. Just because you can arrange them in some kind of order doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> and just because you think, well, this layer is found on top, that doesn't mean it's younger. If the top layer is younger, I'm, where did it come from? Outer space or something? All the layers were here. They were shuffled by the flood. Hmm. But the Bible says, the scoffers in the last days will be willingly ignorant. The Bible is the word of God. So she makes up a story here, pure SpongeBob imagination, that the horses grew taller. This lineage also developed longer molar teeth and degeneration of the outer phalanges on the feet. So it went from four-toed down to one-toed. The horse today has a one-toed hoof, right? You're making up a story. She said in her article, Miss Wackham did, fossils are a window into the past. No, Miss Wackham, they are not, okay? They're an example of something that died. Anyway. They provide clear evidence that evolution has occurred. No, they do not. You are lying or dumb. Okay? <sighs> Scientists who find and study fossils are called paleontologists. Now, you're right about that one. Congratulations. Okay. The oldest horse fossils show what the earliest horses were like. No, they don't, Miss Wackham. They're making this up. The four-toed uh, Hyresa theorem is not a horse. They were only half meter tall, about the size of a fox. And they had four long toes. And you know that was a horse, huh? <laughs> you know it was going to become a horse. Yeah, you can tell it's become a, going to become a horse because, you know, it's small and got four toes. Everybody can tell that. <laughs> Other evidence shows they lived in wooded marshlands where they probably ate soft leaves. Uh, do our donkeys eat soft leaves, you think? Well, how can you possibly, A, how can you possibly believe something so dumb? Secondly, how can you pay, how can you get paid to teach this to other students? And you students, how can you be so dumb as to fall for it? <laughs> Wake up. Amen. She says, they became taller, which would help them see predators when they fed in tall grass. <laughs> how do you know such a thing? Could they be short and maybe stand on a hill like the mercats do? Eventually, they reached a height of 1.6 meters. So they went from 0.4 to 1.6 meters just because they needed to be taller. How I many of you ever wished you were a little taller to reach the butter on the top shelf or something? Or Yeah, okay. They evolved a single large toe that eventually became a hoof. They make up these stories and put it in textbooks and kids believe it. She believes it. This would help them run swiftly and escape predators. Wait, wait, wait. So an animal with one hoof can run faster than any other kind? Is that true? Are there any creatures that have four toes or five toes that can run pretty fast? Yeah. Cheetah. Cheetah. Uh, cheetah, yeah. 
You said you believe the embryo has gill pouches and still use the fake drawings. Those are not gills like a fish. This is lie number 12 in my series, Lies in the Textbooks. They're still teaching evidence from development. Similarity of early stages in development helped convince Darwin, and you're helping convince your students using these same fake drawings. This is not true, Miss Wackham. Good name for her, Wackham. Yeah, okay. All right. Darwin considered this the strongest single class of evidence in favor of his theory. Haeckel, the guy who lied and made up the drawings, called it the biogenetic law. They call them gill slits like a fish. This is just a bold-faced lie. It's not true. Bone, or these folds of skin develop into bones in the ear and glands in the throat, and they produce hormones. They have nothing to do with breathing. I got folds of skin in my elbow. I can't breathe through them. Never have anything to do with breathing. This guy's got a bunch of folds of skin, too. He can't breathe through them either. So does she. <laughs> now, look, as much as I think you know, running around with other women would be wrong. I can understand a little bit why Bill Clinton did what he did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> would you want to go home to that every night? I mean, hello? Okay. <laughs> he made whole charts, and you're still using his chart, Miss Wackham. Why, why does your university president allow you to do that? Is it because he likes evolution, too? Because he doesn't like any rules on his life, like, you know, thou shalt not. That's the only reason people would believe this propaganda. Despite its status as a fake, Darwin continued to use the biogenetic law as the most important evidence of common descent. And Miss Wackham, you still have it listed on your website, uh, whatever that is, as evidence for evolution. You should be ashamed of yourself. Retire and ask if you can be trained on the lawnmower. <sighs> 1969. The biogenetic laws become so deeply rooted in biological thought it cannot be weeded out, in spite of having been demonstrated to be wrong by numerous scholars. Miss Wackham, you're way behind on your science, honey. Go take a look through them. Almost all of them use this as evidence for evolution. The human embryo having gill slits? They have to be conspiring together to promote a lie. It's been proven wrong for well over 100 years. I mean, come on. But they don't dare admit this was a lie, because then some kid might say, well, I wonder what else they're lying about. Everything. Gill slits, gill slits, gill slits, gill slits. Gill slits, gill slits, gill slits, gill slits, gill slits. Common ancestor, gill slits. Ben Wagner. Short answer. Humans never have gills or our gill slits don't normally open up the way that fish gill slits do. But we definitely do have the same basic structures, the pharyngeal arches, that go on to form gills in fish. We've just evolved to modify them for purposes other than extracting oxygen from water. It's all over the internet. And Miss Wackham is still teaching it, and you need to be whacked. Sweetly in Christian love, okay?